Should be locked. Weird. I shouldn't have stayed up so late last night to watch the game.
Is everybody supposed to be here? I just can't. Uh, I can check our uh, uh, who's working remote this time. Um, let's see, so it is the week of February 8th. So, oh, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll look at them. They're like, well, I'm going to escape. I'm sorry. Are, is it going to be too much for you to move around? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Let's see. Uh, Braden. Braden's oh there you oh you're heading out okay cool thank you sorry I'm still trying to learn everybody with their and then Trevor he's heading out all right you know in my job description I didn't know I was gonna have to be the COVID police but yes I am so thanks for rolling with this so how's everybody doing? Are we kind of like, I'm always curious, are, are you kind of like, okay, I guess I'm here <laughs> and I'm going to have to be here another eight or nine weeks, right? How many people are like, man, I wish it was like mid-April to just like be done? No. Oh, okay, a few. How many are like, man, this is great. We got like another eight, nine, ten weeks. It's going to be awesome. A little bit. Yeah, uh, everybody else sort of in the middle. I'm always kind of curious to see what the the mood of the, of the campus is. So. Well, yeah, I think it's too late for us to escape. So I think we're going to be here for at least... Only, what... 10 or 11 more weeks. Ooh, wow, when you say it like that, that's rough. That's okay, though. Trust me, I'd take this every day over other occupations I've done. So this is fantastic. All right. Um, I closed the windows, so at least it's not 32 degrees in but it's not quite as warm as I would hope for. All right, so a few the housekeeping things I wanna go over. So, um, I wrote them up here too. So uh, Wednesday's an Eagle Day. I, I know, isn't that crazy? I'm kind of, the teacher in me is a little, frustrated because it's like we're just kind of getting in a rhythm and so it's like you get a big pothole but then the other part of me is like oh this is actually pretty good so so we will not meet on wednesday that will be our second eagle day i think all right um discussion guides so those are due friday you can email these to me um and then um, Jay and I will take a look at those. Okay. Do you have a space back there? Okay. I think, is everybody that's supposed to be remote? Remote? Maybe I screwed up. All right. Is everybody good where you are right now? Okay. All right. We won't call the COVID security people. All right. Um, I want to show you, I'm, we're going to do a different uh, group project. This is different than what we're doing for Jay. Uh, but this group project is going to be cool because the winning group can be exempt from the final. So that could be cool. Everybody cool with taking one last final? Okay. Yeah. Um, I will provide a study outline for you guys on Friday, okay? And then we'll have our 
first exam on Monday the 22nd. So that's two weeks from today, okay? Any questions about any of that? All right, I wanna get, I wanna show you the, well, there's Trevor. I wanna show you the uh, contest because I think this is gonna be kind of cool. All right, so I also, oops, gosh, come on. I do that every single time. Okay. Come back. There we go. All right, I, I've been doing this, uh, basically the same kind of group project um, for, I guess, three or four years now. And I was kind of getting tired of it. So then I came up with something that I think could be kind of cool. So what I did was based on your Myers-Briggs, I did the best I could to put people in groups where you have basically an even number, close to even number of people that are extroverted and introverted, okay? And by the way, introverted's not bad. I'm like 60, 40 introverted. I could spend like my whole day all by myself and I'd probably be cool. So if that's you, you're probably an introvert. So, um, so I have placed everyone in groups but let me tell you how this is going to work. So each of you has, well, I wish it was like real money. You have a million dollars, okay? Each one of you have a million dollars in your investment account. And each one of you have been assigned to a company that is on the leading edge of Internet of Things. Have you heard of IoT before? A little bit now. So um, I've seen a commercial recently that is a pretty cool example of IoT. So you can have your uh, Amazon Echo tied to your faucet in your kitchen. And you can say, Alexa, fill up this container with a quart of water and it'll fill it with water, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so it's kind of around like the smart home. So you can have everything all on, you know, your heat and your lights and all of that pre-programmed so that each one of those devices is basically a little mini computer. Have you seen some of these or heard of the smart home? Have you guys have this? Well, so I went to Forbes, which is a big kind of money magazine, and I found the top 20 companies that are in IoT. Okay. So here are their websites. I ran out of, so we have 22 people, and I only had the top 20. So I got a couple of companies that you may have heard of, but they're working on what are called IOT printers. So basically, um, if the if Boeing has a printer right next to the CEO's office in, in their headquarters, if you're a Lexmark or you're a Xerox, you can see that printer over the internet and be able to tell how much ink it has, if it's getting ready to break, how much are they printing on it, um, all those kinds of things. So it's pretty cool. You can really look into the, the printer or the copier. So here's how it's going to work. So each one of you has a company and each one of you has a million dollars. Okay. Um, you're going to research your company and then every other week you're going to do a presentation on the strengths. Remember, we were talking about SWOT analysis. So the week of the 15th, next week, you'll do a presentation on strengths. So Caroline just left, but 
she'll do a presentation on the strengths of Armis security. And then after everyone's presented, then you're gonna take your million dollars and you're gonna invest it in other companies that you think would be worthy of your part of your investment. Does that make sense so far? All right, so how does this work in the end? So every other week, each one of you will be doing a presentation. I've got to figure out, we've got some time constraints. I'm working on the logistics. But after every week, you're going to be able to invest your money, your fund money, into any other company other than yours. Okay. Now, the key is that we're going to have an investment board. And every week, I'll have this updated so you know who's leading, okay? Um, so if, for example, you're in the bottom quartile, just you as an individual, you might say, man, I gotta up my game for the weaknesses. I've gotta like make sure, hey, here are the weaknesses, but here's what they need to do about fixing those weaknesses. Then maybe all of a sudden you'll head to the top of the leaderboard because you'll say, hey, you did a really, really good job of explaining the weaknesses and how they're going to overcome them. Okay. And so we'll have that update every week. And then in the end, the group that has the largest combined balance, okay, and we'll look at that as a percentage of beginning versus end. So what do I mean by that? So what I mean is that there are a couple of groups that only have 4 million. So I'm not gonna penalize those that have 4 million only because it's not fair, right? So I'm gonna do a percentage difference between the beginning and the end, that way it'll even it out, okay? So the group that has the most amount of money at the end can be um, exempt from the final. What do you think? Cool, you got it, Cameron? Anybody like completely confused, like I got no idea what's going on? And we'll keep explaining as we go. Ooh, somebody liked this, this is kind of cool. Isn't it fun to kind of invest, to think about it? Yes. Um, so what exactly makes it a new product? Is it just the company that each person has? Well, so like for example in this, well, let's, let's pick yours, Rebecca, here you are. All right, so in your group, even though you've got 4 million, if let's say Rebecca, you have Caramba Security, Henry and Dalton and Jacob can come around you and say, hey, you know, it'd be really cool if you could like look at this or talk about this, because I was looking at it. And I think maybe you could do a better job of explaining how valuable this is. So the, the group, benefits by helping each other within the group. Does that make sense? So you're all kind of like your own little investment club. Any questions? All right, um, so a little bit of the rules here. So every week, each student must take $200,000 or one fifth of their entire balance and invest it across the other potential companies. Now, you could, maybe decide, well, I'm just going to invest within my own group. But that may or may not be a great idea because depending on how other people present their company, you might say, well, I don't know. You know, I think I want to invest more in that other company. So there's a little gamesmanship going on. You know what I mean? You guys will have to figure that out. Um, you want to base your investments based upon the current or prior weeks. PowerPoint presentation. So you guys will be doing a little bit of selling. You can't invest in your own company. I mean, it's cool that you love it because it's your company, but you need to be investing in other companies based upon um, what the other students have presented. You can split your investments, right? So you don't have to take $200,000 after week one and just put it in one of these companies. You could take like 50,000 here, 50,000 here, and 50 and 50, right? You can split that up however you want. Um, 
And then I'm working on, you'd think Google Forms could do this, but I'm working on a, a way so that you guys can just uh, fill out, you know, three, three minutes or two minutes, a little Google Form, and then I'll be able to suck all that data out so that I can upload or update the investment board. Does that make sense? All right. Um, and then the group with the largest combined balance, and I'll, again, I'll rebalance if you've only got four versus five, will be exempt from the final. All right. Yes, sir. How do you raise your balance? So how do you raise your balance? Okay. So let's say, let's say that, um, In your case, Nick, you'll you are dependent upon your ability to have other people think that what you're doing with hologram is a good investment. Does that make sense? So you're kind of selling that and you're saying, man, this hologram thing, if you're not investing it, you're missing it. And you'll be able to go on their website and kind of see all the stuff they do. Okay. Yes. So we're investing in each other's companies? You're investing in each other's. Yep. But then, so you've got the game of investing in others. So you're each going to try to compete to do the best job of selling. And you also have the dynamic of helping each other in your own group. Is there any other question? Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, shame on me. I'll get that fixed. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. I'll get that fixed. Ew. Okay. We'll do. I promise that was not intentional. No, no, Just okay. no, thank you. Hopefully everybody else is good. Okay. All right. So the, I think this will be fun. I'm trying to combine marketing, right? So you're going to be doing some SWOT analysis strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, then a final pitch that says, you know, here's what I think my company needs to do around improving their product or their price or promotion or placement. And at the end of, by that time, in the first part of April, you guys will know all about those four things. You'll be experts, okay? Any other questions? Yes? Well, so I'm trying to think about, I'm, I want to work on that because my fear is that we'll run out of time. And so I need to kind of think about the logistics of how we do that. Um, I thought about, you guys could record them on your own, on your MacBooks or your PCs and then upload them in Discovery. And then you guys could just watch each other's videos at your convenience. Does that make sense? Would you want to do it like that? How many? The yes. The issue with that is, it's not just me. Uh, some people don't watch videos when they're uploaded. Okay. Realistically. Okay. Everybody's going to watch them. Okay. Okay. So I'm trying to, let me play with this because I've got to figure out, I want to make it a good use of everybody's time. Um, but I don't want to run out of time because we got two or three different big things we're trying to do, cover the content, work on this project. Uh, we got one more paper um, and then we've got Jay's stuff, so, okay. I promise it's gonna be fun. Everybody looks like they just saw a ghost. It's gonna be okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's see, we talked about Eagle Day, discussion guide, group project, study outline exam. Okay, we got all of those. Just trying to make sure nobody is left hanging out. Yeah, there we go. Got a couple people hanging. And I'll, uh, 
I'll upload this recording and discovery so you guys can, if you have any questions, like what was he talking about there, you can go back and rewatch it. Okay. Braden and Caroline, thanks for, uh, and Trevor, thanks for being flexible. Okay, so I think where we left off, we were talking about strategic planning. Um, so let's, let's talk about how does marketing fit in the strategic planning. So the way to kind of think about this, um, I'm gonna turn my camera on, those of you that are on Zoom, so you can see this here. And when I see myself on camera, I'm like, holy crap, who's that old dude? That's scary. I used to be young once, I know you guys don't believe that. Um, so we've got strategic planning. Uh, and we've got marketing planning. Oops, I ran over. So the way that I kind of think about uh, the ways that these interact with one another. I don't know if you guys can see this on Zoom. It may be a little bit hard, hard to see. Um, is that strategic planning just kind of is the overarching umbrella and then marketing planning um, uh, fits, fits within that. Um, wow. That's probably harder to read, harder to see guys on Zoom. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, what it means is that if let's say you're working at Boeing, I'm just picking out Boeing right now, the Boeing kind of the, the, the board of directors is going to establish uh, directions on where the company should go. But then marketing is one component of that, right? So marketing is going to be alongside operations and manufacturing and finance and all of these other um, all these other functions and so marketing has to obviously be cognizant of what are the other functions within Boeing doing and so um, we're going to set marketing objectives and we're going to develop strategies that support those objectives and then we're going to implement and control uh, the marketing so uh, one way that I kind of think about this um, over here is uh, any runners in this group, anybody who likes to run marathon kind of stuff? No, not, not, okay. You said what about like <laughs> longer distance? No, I run like a 100. Oh, okay. All right. Has anybody ever tried to run even like a 10K? No? Okay. I mean, like an old fat dude, I can still do it. It's kind of crazy. Uh, you should try it sometime, right, Henry? Sound exciting? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, that is so good. So let's say you wanted to run a, a 10K, which is uh, 6.2 miles. And so what you might do is you might say, well, I'm going to do a situation analysis. Well, I'm overweight. <laughs> And so I probably need to lose some weight and I can't necessarily at 55 years old, just, you know, run six miles. I probably need to do a little bit of training. So I've kind of done a bit of a situation analysis and then on my marketing objectives, and now I'm thinking about, it. okay, I could say one of my objectives is I just want to finish the race or I might get super aggressive and say, you know, I'd like to finish it under uh, how fast have you guys, if you've ever run, how fast do you run a mile? How fast have you run a mile before? I haven't run a mile since I was in like seventh grade. <laughs> okay, has anybody ever run a mile recently? Yes. Six minutes. Six minutes? 
You ran it in six minutes? I'm not running with you. <laughs> I'm like a nine or 10 or 11 minute. I'm sort of like a, a brontosaurus, you know. Just, you know, not like smooth and like a, a gazelle, you might be probably right. So I might set an objective that is, for me, well, if I could finish it in 50 minutes. Okay. I know that's, I'm, I have to set the bar somewhere. I know that's low. Um, so if that's my objective, then I've got to develop some strategies. I've got to maybe get on a better eating regimen. I'm going to have to run three or four times a week. I might do uh, some kind of lifting or core or whatever it may be. And I, I need to set those kind of numerical objectives and then I have strategies that are going to enable me hopefully to be able to run that race in under 50 minutes or around 50 minutes. And then if, uh, step four is I'm going to develop and implement and control a plan. So maybe every time I run, I want to get a little bit faster. In my next training run, I'm going to get a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And then I'm going to track my weight. I'm going to say every week, I want to get a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter, right? And so that's one of the ways that we can think about um, how does marketing planning fit in strategic planning? It's a part. It's a part of it. Okay. All right. So when we're thinking about a marketing strategy, we're, we're going to adjust what's called the marketing mix. So I think maybe I mentioned at the beginning of this semester, excuse me, or basically four level levers we can pull, I can call them, or I, most people are calling the four Ps, uh, product, price, promotion, and placement. Now, um, like any kind of discipline, the four Ps, some people say they're five Ps, some people say they're six Ps or whatever. Um, I suppose in academia, everybody has their own, you know, special sauce or whatever. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, we'll just say there are four Ps. And so if you're a marketing manager, you can adjust uh, any of these four Ps or not based upon what you think uh, and the market data is telling you, you need to do to continue to keep up with competition. So um, I'm trying to remember if we talked about the product life cycle. All we did a little bit about um, Apple and the iPhone. Who, who was kind of helping me lead that discussion last week? Do you guys remember? I know it was a long time ago. Well, so if we think about Apple and we think about the iPhone as a product, let's say you are the director of marketing for uh, uh, Apple's iPhone. And let's say sales are starting to flatten or maybe decline. I could maybe improve the product. Do they ever improve the iPhone? I mean, they say they do. I don't know. I mean, mine seems to work pretty well. and I've had it for like four years. But, you know, they always make, you know, a little bit faster, a little more memory. Um, you know, uh, maybe the camera is just a little bit better. The video is a little bit better, whatever. So we could determine in our marketing strategy, you know, our sales are starting to flatten on our iPhone. We might need to make this product a little better, right? And we probably look at, well, what's Samsung doing with their smartphones or Google or I don't know who else is in the smartphone world. So it's Samsung, Google, any others that you guys, any, does anybody have anything other than iPhone or Google or Samsung, Android? Okay. So I'm, you know, you're probably, if you're the director of marketing for iPhone, you're probably going to say, okay, we're going to have to do better. And then we probably need to de 
develop a product that's not only better from uh, the standpoint of what we had before, but we also got to make it better than Samsung, make it better than Google and so on. So that might be one way that we might think about, okay, from a strategy standpoint, I need to make the product better. Um, price, okay, yeah, again, if we think about the Apple iPhone, we can maybe lower the price. Are there any dangers with maybe lowering the price? Is there any potential problems? Anything we should worry about? Catherine, what about you? Is there anything that you would worry about if we lower the price at all? The only thing I can think of is I feel like it's a psychological thing, but if someone feels like you're paying more for something, I think it's going to be better. Ooh, excellent. So, so um, there might be some products or services where the more you pay, you might actually feel better, right? So. So um, do you mind if I ask you a tiny personal question? So do you have a boyfriend or some guy kind of in the picture? Okay, you do, okay. So, um, you know, I don't know if you're like engaged, I don't need to know about, but let's say he wanted to get you some jewelry. Yeah. And so, which, would that be okay with you? Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> so it, he, he might say, well, you know, really like you but you know my job I'm not getting as many hours as I used to so I, I want to get you a ring but I don't really want to get one that's like super nice just kind of medium how would that feel for you uh, um, <laughs> all right it depends I feel like I'd be okay with it okay I'm getting it paid but um yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay, all right. So let's let's just don't, don't attach any of that negativity to him. Okay, this is just an academic conversation. But there, but your point is well made, which is there are some products or services where if you lower the price, you your sales may actually fall. If you have like a luxury good, like jewelry, um, you know, I can think of other kinds of examples. I mean, if we may have mentioned this in here, but if you had to have heart surgery, are you going to go, you know, I, I just, I'm going to kind of put this on eBay, see if I can get, you know, decent doctor, but not like the best, because I don't really want to pay for the best. Uh, it's your heart. Okay. <laughs> so maybe we're not going to let price be the ultimate arbiter of how we decide. So we could make the product better or worse. If we want to improve sales, we might lower or raise the price. And in the case of luxury goods, um, raising the price for some goods like jewelry, you might sell more, right? And there is kind of the whole psychology around, wow, if the more expensive it is, like that must mean it's more desirable and therefore I'm going to buy. I'm going to be more motivated to buy it. Um, promotion. So I, I could, uh, again, if I'm Apple, I might say, well, I want to put, you know, uh, my new phone, I'm going to discount it. Maybe I'll sell more, but there might be a little bit of a danger too, right? If I lower the price on my upcoming iPhone, um, there could be some negative blowback. What what could potentially be thought of in that case? Gosh, sales must be horrible. They never discount these things, right? That could be a psychological thing, right? What else? So you have to be careful, right? I mean, just because you are talking about the product or service that in and of itself, while making more people aware, might have some negative blowback. Like I think, well, certainly during COVID, but even before, um, my wife and I saw more Disney, you know, Disney World ads on TV. I was like, 
they never advertise. I mean, like everybody knows where Disney World is, and everybody knows where Mickey lives. So in my head, I'm going, it must not be going so great down at Disney World because if they're having to run ads, that might mean that you know sales aren't really what they thought they would be. So we have to kind of think about, do I promote? Does that make sense for my product or service or not? And then place, you know, prior to the internet, you know, it was all about your location of your store. Now, I mean, that's important, but particularly with Amazon and, and all kinds of, you know, kind of, uh, touchless shopping or online shopping and the place has really become different in that, you know, can I navigate your website easily? Can I find what I'm looking for? That kind of stuff. So any questions about our four P's around marketing strategies? Okay. Braden, any questions? I'm sorry. I don't mean to turn my back on you guys. Are you, you okay? All right, good. Um, yeah, so lots of different things we can think about around uh, product. We talked about some of these, uh, sometimes design, packaging. Um, do you guys buy like hard copy books often? I mean, I know you buy like textbooks, but like, you know, reading books. Rebecca, I kind of figured you might. Do you have a special genre? Science fiction or historical fiction? Uh, mostly okay. Ray Bradbury. Mo mostly what? Ray Bradbury. Or oh, Ray Bradbury. Whoa, man. Highbrow. Very nice. Okay. So if you buy a hard copy book, how important is it for you to see the cover? And you look at it and you go, oh. Well, that must be a good book because I see the cover. For a book, I guess I don't care that much about the cover unless I'm looking for like a coffee table book, you know. Okay. Looks nice. Something that looks yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay. Generally, if I'm just trying to read it, I don't care too much about the cover. Yeah, especially if you know the author, you're like, oh, I really like the author. Um, um, you know, to me, it's interesting that book covers can have a, a really big impact on whether someone buys the book or not, which is kind of interesting. Um, when I used to travel a lot, which of course nobody's really traveling much now, if I had a long flight, I'd go to, you know, one of the stores in the airport and then you're kind of going, okay, it's a four hour flight. Maybe I get a magazine, you know, and then you kind of go, okay, eh, popular mechanics. No, I'm not going to read that. People, no. Okay, I'm not going to read that. My wife, my wife. Um, but then maybe I find like Forbes or Fortune or uh, something like that. And I go, you know, I, there's a lot of meat here. I could read this. And I'll look at the cover, right? And if you look at the cover, there featuring some person like Elon Musk or some industry. And for me, when I look at that, the packaging design, that has an impact on me where I think about, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that looks interesting. You know, I used to, when I was, I guess, more in high school, um, I loved reading. <laughs> Henry will not be surprised by this. I loved reading the uh, preseason college football magazines, yeah. right? So, you know, and then when I was growing up, I lived in Michigan and Northern Ohio. So it was all kind of Big Ten stuff. Um, down here, it's, you know, more SEC kind of stuff. But, you know, they would feature, oh man, you know, that guy's an amazing running back in Georgia. So yeah, I want to read about his story or whatever. So. This idea of packaging can have a tremendous impact on um, sales, uh, for, for example. Um, lots of different variations. We might think about how do we vary the way the product looks or the way it operates. 
uh, branding. Um, well, last night, so I was watching the Super Bowl. Did you guys watch any of the commercials or anybody watch the Super Bowl at all? Just a little. All right. Any cool commercials that you saw that, that I didn't, pay didn't pay pay a lot of attention? I was kind of intrigued by um, Cadillac. Looks like they have a pretty new design. Did you guys see that ad or the TV ad? Um, and it's interesting because for me, they're they're changing the the design where it's looking a little more hip. Um, to me, I think about Cadillac is like, wow, that's like what my great grandparents drove or something. Right? Do you have a, a vision of that? If somebody has a Cadillac, that's like, that's what my grandparents drive. Right? I don't know. What do you think? Is that logical? Yeah, it's kind of like an older person's car. <laughs> um, but they're really kind of making them look snazzier. So maybe, you know, they're saying, hey, we've got to appeal to a younger generation at Cadillac because you know, all of our core customers are going away. So we've got to somehow get further down in the, in the generation track. Uh, pricing. Um, you know, we talked about the idea of if maybe our product is more of what would we what we would call like a normal good, then um, if we lower the price, then we're going to sell more of the product. Okay. Um, we talked about where there are some products or services where if we want to sell more, we would maybe raise the price like a normal or excuse me, a luxury good. Who, who's had econ? 271 and here nobody oh, oh, you're in for a treat it's going to be so exciting so um one of the things that you'll learn about in econ is price elasticity and so for luxury goods uh for, for example uh their price elasticity would be more than one so that if i increase the price of a luxury good by one unit, let's say by a dollar, that the amount of uh, units that I would sell of that luxury good would be more than one. And so you have to kind of really know, you have to know your market, you have to know your product. So messing with price, man, you really got to know what you're doing. Okay. Um, you know, it used to be, I was thinking about, um, you know, buying uh, or getting hotel reservations. It used to be where they would have a stated um, nightly rate, and then that would be kind of what it would be. So, like, you could lock that in for three or four nights, right? Now, I don't know if you guys have ever recently booked a hotel room or maybe your parents or whatever, but, like, every night, <laughs> it changes and it'll be more expensive on the weekends and then cheaper during the week. What's going on there? How does, how do they get away with that? That seems like that's not fair. How does that work? Rebecca, what are they doing? Are they just like trying to take advantage of old people like me? Is that what they're doing? Okay. Well, I think that it has to do with demand. I mean, if it's more expensive on the weekends, you know, more people are, out on the weekends, that type of thing. Yeah, right. So, so if we think about supply and demand, if let's say we've got a, a hotel that has a hundred rooms and it is in Indianapolis, where I think they're having, is it where they're going to have the NCAA yeah. final? The final? Not the entire tournament. Oh, the entire tournament. Yeah. Okay. So you know, if yeah. it were now in that hotel with a uh, hundred rooms. Maybe the, maybe it's like a Fairfield and it's like a hundred bucks a night. You know, in March, <laughs> may not be, it might be like 800 bucks a night, right? Because of supply and demand. It's just, you know, people want to be there and there's only a finite uh, number of rooms. And so prices are going to go up. Uh, what's that? 
question? <laughs> no, bummer. I was getting ready to entertain an interesting question. Uh, promotion. Um, you know, we, we talked about that. There are lots of different ways we can think about promotion. Uh, we could think about advertising. So we're talking about Super Bowl ads. Um, public relations. So Toyota had an ad last night uh, during the Super Bowl. And it was, uh, maybe I'm a bleeding heart person. I don't know. But it was kind of like, people being kind to one another. I mean, that's good. I mean, Jesus said to be kind, right? But I was kind of like, wow, Toyota spent like 30 million to basically say, you're a really nice person. I really appreciate you. I, if I were the CFO at Toyota, I'd be like, who decided that was a good idea? Everybody knows to be nice. You know? but, but maybe in COVID world, maybe it makes sense to to, hey, we're a caring, loving, <laughs> you know, company. Actually, uh, is there a car company that they really have taken a serious shift in kind of their brand imagery around this kindness thing? I mean, which is good, but anybody know? Subaru. Anybody own a Subaru? What's kind of their tagline? It's what? Yes, it's it basically love. It's all around this idea of love. And I'm like, I mean, it's cool, but I'm probably not target audience, right? <laughs> Subaru, I think, is targeting younger people who, you know, or maybe younger families. They like to hike and go drive across country and they've got canoes on top of the Subaru, whatever. I mean, that's kind of who they are. And so they've, they've done a really good job of saying, okay, from a promotion standpoint, I want to appeal to kind of the outdoorsy people. So that's, that's kind of interesting. That's part of their strategy. And then uh, <clears throat> distribution. Again, this is, different than what it used to be and now by almost everything uh, over the web. Uh, but in some cases, you know, I mean, I think it's <clears throat> some cases, like, for example, if you are going to look at a car, I mean, I think it's Carvana and some of these others, they'll bring the car to you, but it's a little awkward. I'd still want to go to the dealership, for example, or go to a car loan. Um, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if Tesla's still doing this, but when I was working in Indianapolis a few years ago, uh, anybody from Indy or around? Yeah. So there was a Tesla dealership, or at least a showroom at uh, Keystone Crossing. Yeah. And so I remember I had one night where I wasn't working till midnight. And I, I was walking, I guess I went down the escalator and it was like, right down one of the escalators and they had a Tesla showroom there. I went in and I was like, that's kind of cool that Tesla was, they would put these, uh, uh, you know, they had a couple different models in there. And I thought, man, that is pretty awesome. It's still there. Is it still there? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. I didn't get in one because I was like, man, this, this sales guy is going to like chew my arm off. I'm just trying to kill some time. I think I ate some ice cream and was walking around. Right? That's a really nice ball. I love that ball. Um, so, but Tesla, they made a pretty interesting distribution, kind of, or I guess really more promotion uh, decision where, yeah, we've got a website. Yeah, we run ads, but uh, we're also going to have it where you can kind of touch it and feel it right when you're, Doing Christmas shopping or whatever it may be. So I thought that was kind of interesting. All right. I won't see you on Wednesday. I'm going to be sad. What am I going to do? You guys can like send me an email. Hey, hope you're having a good day. All right. So um, discussion guide, get those turned in. Um, and I'll get the group project worked on. Questions? Do I just? 
Like you want us to, you know, the, the yeah, you can just email me the discussion guide. You can just send me an email. Yep. Thanks, Braden, Trevor, Caroline. See you guys. Thank you.